Welcome to my guide to the CGP Set A Grammar and Punctuation 2 test. Okay, number one, read the sentences below and underline all the conjunctions. What you should know is a conjunction joins two clauses together. So as you can see in the first example, we went outside after it had stopped raining. The two separate clauses in that sentence would be, we went outside, that makes sense by itself, it's the main clause, and it had stopped raining would be the other. Now we join them together using the first conjunction, which is after. That joins these two clauses together. In the description, I will put a link to some more conjunctions because it's really handy if you can learn them off by heart so you can spot them when it comes to your test. Second one then, I'm not going to the party unless Naomi comes with me. The conjunction would be unless in this case. And finally, whenever Jimmy's dog barks, his cat hides under the bed. Uh, it would be the first word here, whenever. Number two, read the sentence below using the verb in brackets, complete the sentence in the present progressive tense. An easy way to remember the present progressive is it tends to be am, then with the verb ing. So in this case, we have eat, so it would be I am eating. I am eating a biscuit. Number three, the children ignored the alarm. Rewrite the active sentence in the passive form. And what you need to know about an active sentence is it tends to be the subject is doing something to the object. So in this case, the children are the subject. That's who the sentence is about. And they're doing something, they're ignoring the alarm, and the alarm is the object in this sentence. In a passive sentence, we would flip that around. We would have the object is having something done to it by the subject. So the answer to this one would be, the alarm was ignored by the children. Number four, take the sentence which uses brackets correctly. So the brackets in this case are giving us a little bit of extra context about the noun, which is Graham. So the correct one here should be Graham, my uncle, loves smoked salmon. That bit there is giving us a little bit extra information about Graham. Number five, circle the object in the sentence below. So Mrs. Patel bought a pastry. The subject of the sentence would be Mrs. Patel. That's who it's about. And she's buying a pastry. She's bought a pastry. The thing that she has bought, the object, is a pastry. So that is your object. Number six, tick two boxes to show which of the words in the sentence below are relative pronouns. Fortunately, these are things you just need to learn off by heart. A very quick clue I can give you is they tend to start with a W, and they also tend to follow a comma. But I'll put a link in the description to a list of relative pronouns so that you can go away and learn them if you don't already know them. So the answer in this case would be who and which. Number seven, take the word which is an adjective made by adding a suffix to the word cheer. So remember, an adjective is a describing word. It describes a noun. So which one of these would describe a noun? Let's use, an example, the man. Uh, it would be the cheerful man. So that's our answer. Number eight, tick one box to show which word is an adverb. You should know that an adverb describes a verb, describes when, where, or how the verb is taking place. So the verb in this sentence is hit, and how did Marcus hit the ball? He hit it forcefully, so that would be the adverb in this sentence. For nine, read the sentence below, underline the longest possible noun phrase. So remember, a phrase is a collection of words, and a noun phrase is a collection of words which describe the noun. And in this case, there are two nouns. We have a garage, and we also have a car. Now the longest possible noun phrase here that describes one of those nouns would be uh, brightly coloured ultra fast sports car. That's just describing that one noun there. Number 10, read the sentence below and underline the subordinate clause. You should know that a main clause makes sense by itself, can stand by itself, but a subordinate clause is connected to the main clause using a subordinate conjunction, and that bit doesn't really make sense by itself without the main clause. So in this sentence we have, I don't eat tomatoes. That's the main clause, that makes sense by itself, unless they're cooked. Unless is the subordinate conjunction, and they're cooked would be the remaining bit of the clause. So all of that here, including the conjunction, unless they're cooked, is the correct answer. Number 11, my dad's house isn't far away, so I'm often there to see him. Circle three words in the sentence above that need an apostrophe. So the first one would be dad's, because it's saying my dad's house. The house belongs to the dad, so it's a possessive apostrophe. The next word is isn't. That is a contraction. It's short for is not. Finally, the last one is I'm. Remember, I'm is also a contraction, it's short for I am, so it needs an apostrophe there. 
And B, it says pick one of the words you've circled and explain why it needs an apostrophe. Just like I've just mentioned, all you need to write in there is, uh, for example, if you chose dad's, it would be a possessive apostrophe because it's talking about the house that dad owns. You need to be quite clear in that. Also, if you chose isn't or I'm, they're contractions, they're words that are short for and then give you a full word that it's short for. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because that really helps me out. And you'll also be notified every time we put a new helpful video on. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. See you in the next video. Thanks.